Hello, everybody. Um, so, concept 6.3, looking at Jackson and the second um, bank of the United States. So, as president, Jackson favored a formula of state sovereignty, states' rights, right? S strict construction of the Constitution and laissez faire government because he hoped for a return to old fashioned agrarian oriented Jeffersonianism. On, and this is in the midst, again, of the uh, first industrial revolution, right? So society's changing rapidly during this time. So there's this culture um, within society that's being um, transferred within the, even the presidency of nostalgia. If we can only go back to simpler times, our lives would be much simpler. Um, so th this is sort of the appeal of Jacksonian democracy. On numerous occasions, Jackson looked back to the simpler and presumably pure young Republic of Jefferson's day and praised it for its virtues. Although the agrarian ideal was already out of date, Jackson, like Jefferson, idealized an agrarian society. He described the agricultural interests as, quote, superior in importance, unquote, to all others and the cultivators of the soil as the, quote, best part of the population independent farmers as are everywhere the basis of society and the true friends of liberty." Unquote. Second, Jackson um, also looked upon himself as the guardian of, of the people's interest. He felt by reducing the government's role in the economy it would make it harder for special interest groups to win privileges. Quote, could it really be urged that the uh, framers of the Constitution intended that our government uh, should become a government of brokers? If so, uh, bankers basically, if so, then the profits of the national brokers shop must ensure to the uh, benefit of the whole and not to the few privileged money capitalists to the other rejection of the many." Unquote. Um, again, that's from Andrew Jackson. Jackson was not intimidated by a congressman whose uh, acts he felt were too often controlled by small, selfish groups of powerful um, constituents, and he used his veto power more freely than any of his predecessors. Nor um, would he agree that the Supreme Court had the final word on matters of constitutional interpretation. He believed the presidential oath bound him to support the Constitution as he understood it and not as it was understood by others. This is uh, represented in Jackson's war on the Bank of the United States and his lack of action on behalf of the Cherokee Indians. So yeah, for example, um, John Marshall in Worcester versus the state of Georgia ruled uh, partially in favor for the Cherokee Indians uh, and honoring their sovereignty. Um, and in doing so, uh, partially invalidated um, aspects of the Indian Removal Act of 1830. So um, it was a pretty um, surprising uh, ruling. It was, even, it was surprising that it was even going to be heard by the Supreme Court. It was surprising that the Supreme Court ruled in partial favor of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, when, when Andrew Jackson heard of, of um, John Marshall's decision, um, invalidating aspects of the Indian Removal Act, uh, he's, quote, he's said to have uh, uttered, um, John Marshall has made his decision, now let's, let's see him enforce it. Meaning, um, since as president, pre the President of the United States has the authority and the sole authority to enforce uh, federal law, uh, he had no intention of enforcing John Marshall's uh, opinion as stated in Worcester versus the state of Georgia. Um, as an exponent of laissez-faire, Jackson promised to reduce the government to the simple machine which the Constitution created. This was because Jackson believed that federal intervention in the affairs of people usually came in the following forms. One, special favors to influence minorities, or um, in, in, not like minorities as we think it, minorities being um, like the upper class, um, special interests. Uh, encouragement to monopolistic corporations. Jackson realized that there would be distinctions in society between the uh, abilities of one individual over the other, 
But when laws were taken to add to these natural advantages, artificial distinctions which would make uh, the rich richer and the poor poorer, um, then the humble members of society, farmers, mechanics, laborers, who had neither the time nor the means um, to secure like favors for themselves, um, unquote, had to compl uh, complain about the injustices of their, of their government. Although reducing the government's role in the economy made it harder for favored groups to win special privileges, it also gave free reign to irresponsible, irresponsible entrepreneurs in a period of frantic economic activity. Again, amidst uh, the first industrial revolution. When the Jackson, when Jacksonian mentality could not foresee was uh, the degree of which, in a growing country, unrestrained enterprise could lead on to a new economic uh, combinations, centers of gi gigantic power, largely independent of government regulation. Um, so, Jackson's coming at a time to to um, get the government out of the affairs of business at a time when it's beginning to be needed to um, have government in the affairs of, of the economy because you're, we're seeing the, the beginning days of rising corporations within society in this industrial revolution, which is reducing the once skilled artisans to, to mere laborers. So people's labor that they're selling for wages is being greatly reduced, and in, in turn, people are becoming more and more vulnerable uh, within society. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is history is forever uh, pursued by irony. Here the ultimate irony would be that laissez-faire rationale for Republican simplicity eventually becomes the justification uh, for the growth of unregulated centers of economic power far greater than any um, ever wielded by uh, Biddle's bank. Um, so, Jackson's most um, important controversial use of executive power was his successful attack on the Bank of the United States. The attack demonstrates Jackson's strong uh, prejudice against special interests, as well as his uh, contempt for expert advice, even in, the field, uh, in fields like banking, where his ignorance was absolute. Uh, Furthermore, the, the so-called bank war revealed some of the deepest concerns of Jackson and his supporters and expressed their concept of democracy in a dramatic way. It aroused the intense opposition to the president and his policies, an opposition that cri uh, crystallized in the new national party, the Whigs. The Second Bank of the United States was a large commercial bank which uh, the federal government had chartered for 20 years in 1816 and partially owned 20% of the bank's stock um, as well, uh, as intended by um, Andrew, uh, not Andrew, uh, Alexander Hamilton. Um, this, the bank had long been embroiled in public controversy. Its role in, um, in precipitating the Panic of 1819 by suddenly calling in its loans had led many, especially in the South and the West, to blame the bank for the subsequent depression. But after Nicholas Biddle took over the bank's uh, presidency in 1823, it, it, it would later regain public confidence. Uh, the bank's most important role was, was the stabilization of the nation's money uh, supply. Most Americans' money consisted of notes, in effect paper money, that state chartered commercial banks issued with the promise to redeem on demand with gold or silver uh, coins. The bank, the bank played its stabilizing role by regu uh, regularly collecting these state bank notes, returning them to the banks that had issued them, and demanding that the banks convert them into gold and silver coins. With the threat of collection hanging over them, state banks had to be conservative in extending credit in the form of bank notes. As the state banks continued to issue more notes, they uh, could redeem at any time, they were expanding the money supply. But under the discipline imposed by the second bank, they had to do so cautiously.
because um, the, the um, notes could be called in at any moment. During the prosperous 1820s, the second bank performed quite well, maintaining steady, predictable increases in the money supply throughout the nation, therefore um, controlling inflation. Most people did not understand commercial banking um, back then as uh, today, particularly its capacity to enlarge the money supply through the lending of bank notes. Nor did they appreciate the functions of the second bank. It was easy to believe the that banking was a non-productive activity and that bankers earned their profits illegitimately through the um, exercises of of special privilege um, so this is true back then it's true back uh, it's true today as uh, if you if you look at uh, a lot of postings of YouTube going after the the Federal Reserve and wanting to get rid of the Federal Reserve right um, okay get rid of the Federal Reserve then what um, a lot of people who will attack banks, uh, usually don't understand the function of banks and stabilizing the economy. Um, and so, again, so history <laughs> has a tendency to repeat itself. Various interest groups played on popular prejudice for the purpose of killing uh, the second bank. Wealthy New York bankers, including supporters of Martin Van Buren, who would be uh, Jackson's hand-picked successor to the presidency, wanted to see federal uh, deposits in their banks and some bankers in small cities, including Nashville, support, supporters of Jackson wanted to be free of regulation by the second bank. In 1832, Jackson's opponents in Congress, led by Henry Clay and Daniel Webster, united to impose a political trap on Jackson. Um, knowing that many Democrats in Congress supported the second bank, and that Jackson was opposed to it, Clay and Webster hoped to lure Jackson into an unpopular veto just before the 1832 elections. Consequently, they engineered the passage of a bill to recharter the bank for uh, four years earlier than its original charter of 1836 in order to make an election issue of it. Seeming to fall into the trap, Jackson vetoed the bill but he accompanied his veto with a powerful message that gained wide circulation. Jackson denounced the second bank as a nest of special privileges and a monopoly power that advanced the interests of, quote, the few at the expense of the many, unquote, damaging the, quote, humbler members of society, the farmers, the mechanics, and laborers who have neither the time nor the means of securing like favors to themselves, unquote. So he was able to demonstrate in his veto that he was looking out for the little guy, or at least put on that perception. Finally, Jackson made a connection that was especially damning, uh, damning in Patriot's eyes. He emphasized the heavy investment by the British aristocrats in the second bank. Jackson's charge that the bank was um, involved with a number of conflicts of interest contained much truth. Biddle uh, cleverly lent funds where the bank um, would make inf influential friends. In 1831 alone, a total of 59 members of Congress borrowed from the bank. Also, during one period, Daniel Webster was a director of the bank, its chief paid counsel, its debtor in the sum of thousands of dollars, and a member of the United States Senate, where he eloquently battled for his employer's interests. All right, sound familiar? Uh, a, a, a good public image was attempted by the use of judicious loans made uh, to newspaper editors to ensure, quote, good press. In his veto and subsequent bank war, Jackson had a better sense of the public's anti-corporate mood and, um, than did the supporters of the bank. His most fervent supporters came from a broad spectrum of people who resisted industrialization. Jackson also won support of his position from some promoters of economic growth, such as state bankers who had originally supported the second bank, but now believed its demise would open the way for um, more speculative investments by their banks. Thus, he managed to expand his coalition of groups, even though some um, held diametrically contradictory positions of the value of banking and even industrialization. Herein lies the reason for Jackson's political success, his ability to gain the identification and support
from a wide spectrum of people with different political beliefs, while at the same time able to capture the support of an emerging um, working class. However, the bank veto stimulated significant organized opposition, which culminated in the uh, formation of a new political party, the Whig Party. And we'll take a look at the, um, at the development of the Whig Party in a later lecture called uh, The Development of the Two-Party System in the Next Unit. All right, uh, concept four, uh, 6.4 um, is right here. Describe the national debt and its history and compare and contrast Hamilton's and Jefferson's view on the national debt. How did Andrew Jackson view the debt and what did he do about it? What was the result of Jackson's action? So uh, go ahead, this, this is linked within um, the document where all of the other links are for this essay question. So go ahead and click this and uh, give it a listen. Um, it's an interesting show giving a history of the debt, where it came from, and what happened when it was actually balanced. It was balanced under Andrew Jackson. And it, it talks about the results of actually balancing the budget. A very relevant um, uh, issue since uh, a lot of the election uh, today is being spurned um, by um, a perceived runaway deficit. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.